They are to the Hebrews, the archers that are an ominous, and the people who want their long time, whether Paul or Odin may be one of his co-workers, Marius or Paulus, but really we just don't know. Chapter 2, we discover that Arthur had a first-hand relationship with the disciples who were just around Jesus, so we know who has anchored the teaching of the apostles. We also don't know who the audience of the letter was, or even already lived. Arthur knows already assumes that true knowledge, knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures, especially the story of the first five books of the Bible of the Torah, about Abraham family became nation of Israel, about Moses led them out of slavery in Egypt, and one time I already received the Torah and made a covenant with God where they built tabernacle where priests offered sacrifice and also on how wandered through the wilderness and on the promised land. Artist expects the reader to know all the details about these stories. So most likely the audience is made of Jewish Christians that were named the letter come from. So it also clues from chapter ten that this church community was facing persecution even present because they're associated with Jesus. So coming is walking away from Jesus, manning the fate altogether. This explains the purpose and the structure of this letter. First is a short induction which is followed by four sections where the author compares contrasts with Jesus and key people events in Israel's history. Jesus the first compared the angels in the Torah. Second, the Moses in the Promised Land. Third, the priest in Mitzigalak it is a sacrifice the covenant. Arthur has two main goals in all this contrast. Our first goal is to elevate Jesus as superior to anyone, to anything else, showing that Jesus is worthy of all trust and devotion. The second goal is this, to challenge the reader to remain faithful to Jesus despite the persecution. So this actually includes a strong warning not to abandon Jesus. So let's dive in and see how this all folds. The elevation Jesus begins the opening sentence of the introduction. In the past, so he spoke to ancestors in many different ways, but in these day, days, he spoken to us in his son. So Arthur is saying Jesus is superior to all the previous ways that God has revealed to himself. He makes this astounding claim that Jesus is the radiant God's glory and sack, imprint God's nature. His metaphor are making the closest possible identification between Jesus and God. Good. I mean, Jesus is the real light onto the sun, where Jesus is a person of the sun Savior. And out there is no God apart from Jesus. Jesus is God, became human to son. And they elevate the, the Jesus that explored through the rest of the letter. The first section are to compare Jesus with angels, which strike you kind of why angels? His tradition it taught based on the Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2. The Torah and the Word of God were delivered to the Moses and Mount Sinai by angels. By saying Jesus is superior to angels, the author is claiming Jesus and his messengers of good news as through to all previous messengers of God's Word. So the first warning flows from the great point. If Israel was called to pay attention to the Torah, and my angel, angels, how would they should pay attention as it is announced by the Son of God? And not only that, Jesus' status high above angels, how remarkable is that he rose his high status to become human to suffer and to die. In Jesus, we see greatest glory in the God's greatest humility. Jesus syndrome joined himself, humanity tragic fate. Chapter 3 and 4, the archer moves on the ark of Jesus, severe to Moses, who led the people of Israel through the wilderness and built the tabernacle. So Jesus is the leader of God's people, but him we see not that builders are just a tent, but all creation. The archer retells the story of the Israelites rebelled against Moses in the wilderness, and lost their chance to enter the rest the God's offered them in the land. So here comes the second warning. Jesus grace Moses, how much higher our stakes rebel against him. He was in the wilderness, like in the environment we have to trust God, we have to rest in God's new creation. So make sure we don't rebel like Israel did in the wilderness and lose out the God's gracious offer to enter the new creation. Chapter 5, 7, to the Arthur compare Jesus with Israel priests that come from the line of Aaron. The royal world represents the Israel before God to offer sacrifice 
has done for covered over the sins of people but points out the priests were themselves morally flawed people and so as they offer sacrifice to their own sins so as well as everybody else something more was needed so he argued that Jesus was something more his ultimate priest but Jesus did not come the line of Aaron he rather Jesus was a priest and ordered Mesesegaret, a mystic priest king from ancient Jerusalem. He appeared in the stories about Abraham. You also find in Psalms 110, the Mesetic king from the line of David, he the priest in order of Mesetic. So the author points is, Jesus is the ultimate priest of the king. He mortified flawed, he entered the available people and he is so superior in the military between God and humans, and thus come the warning in section. To reject Jack Jesus is to reject the best, only only fully recognized to God. So don't do that. Which transition to the last comparison, chapter 10 to 8 to 10, and shows how Jesus' death cross was the ultimate sacrifice, separate to all animal sacrifice offered in the temple. The sacrifice have been offered consistently not daily, but also yearly in the Days of Atonement. He has offered life once for all, and sufficient to cover the whole world. So Arthur warns audience from the walking away from, from Jesus, it's like turning your back on gracious offer of God's forgiveness. So why do you do that? Jesus' sacrifice is permanent, he says. The foundation of new covenant spoken in prophets where all sins were forgiven. So now the Arthur elevated Jesus through all these contrasts. So the final section is one big challenge to follow Jesus. So think the big picture. In Jesus, they found God's very word. In Jesus, they found hope for the new creation. In Jesus, the eternal priest, the perfect sacrifice. And so now they should follow all the great models of faith beyond throughout the story of the scriptures. They should remain faithful to Jesus. Trusting despite whatever hardship, persecution, God not abandon his people. As the basic flow through God, the letter which Arthur calls right there at the end, a brief word exhortation. Here's a couple of cutters for the reading letter. When the Arthur quotes from the Old Testament scriptures, it's very out of sentence. Stop and go read the reference and read the quotation in each original context. Sometimes you're puzzled, but more often you'll see all these kind of extra cool connections. And never notice otherwise it's totally worth the effort. You should also know that these warning pa passengers, they're going to make you uncomfortable and they're kind of on the point. They're not to make you afraid, they are to show you that rejecting Jesus is foolish because it's so awesome. But the warning also served the larger purpose of the letter. So Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God's love and mercy. And that's what the letter of Hebrew is all about.